Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We are getting an update from Graphene Manufacturing Group, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GMG. I am chatting again with the founder and CEO, Craig Nickel. For everyone who hasn't heard any of my recent interviews or webinars with GMG, GMG is a clean technology company. They have a proprietary production process to manufacture graphene powder and three different product lines, the battery component, graphene aluminum ion batteries, as well as the thermal XR division and graphene lubricants. We're going to focus a little bit more on the battery division. I get a ton of questions that come in regarding the uh, build out and growth of this battery division. But first things first, I do also get a lot of questions regarding uh, the graphene production process here and how the company makes the graphene and just how much they can scale to grow that graphene production. And on March 1st, we had a news release that came out that uh, stated that Graphene Manufacturing Group and Wood agree to collaboration agreement for Wood to engineer and develop major graphene expansion projects for the company. Craig, start off by recapping this news. What does it mean for the company and this agreement with Wood to, I guess, solidify and grow the current graphene production from the company? Hey, Corey, thanks for having me back on. Yeah, we're very pleased to have a, uh, this, uh, this work we've done with Wood. We went through a process, a pretty intense process to work with some of the biggest uh, engineering companies in the world to work out who we could partner with over a long period of time to develop and um, scale and deliver our graphene manufacturing expansion projects. They are one of the leading uh, engineering companies in the world um, with uh, many, many thousands of engineers uh, and, and, and quite a lot in Australia as well, but they're all over the world. And we're looking to work with them on the graphene manufacturing. So that's where we take the gas and convert that into graphene and then build that out because that scale, um, which we obviously need for, especially for our batteries, for large projects, we're going to need really big capability, you know, borrowing from all the work we've done in, in Shell, which most of the team in, in GMG are from, a good engineering uh, procurement and contracting company um, is absolutely necessary. So we're very proud and very pleased to, to announce and, and to work with Wood, um, and we're starting to go into detail. Just for everyone's awareness, uh, they will be working on the graphene manufacturing, engineering, procurement, contracting, whereas Bosch, that work will be on the battery manufacturing. So that's more of the downstream work once the graphene has been made and how it gets put into the battery. So that they, they will have an interface, of course, which will, will integrate, um, but that they're very much different parts of the value chain. So we're building this, this value chain and focus on a scale value chain and bringing some coalition of the willing uh, partners on board so we can be ready uh, for the demand we see in, in this battery. Okay, so the graphene manufacturing expansion projects, that's really the start of the company, right? Making this graphene. One thing I'm seeing within this news release is you're referring to projects with an S, so plural. What does that mean in terms of multiple facilities or even different areas that you could be building out these expansion projects? Yeah, that's very true. Uh, we've got multiple different projects that we have in mind, obviously, uh, very early on in, in, in development phase and, and conceptual phase. Um, but for us to be able to make these batteries at scale, we will need a large number of, of a, a large production site. And very quickly, you'll say, I want to be near maybe where my customers are. Most of our potential customers for the batteries are in America or North America. And then you would then try to look at how where is the lowest cost gas and electricity. And you would try to find also and put a location where that could be. And that could be Canada, for instance. Or, so that there, those two issues, you, you, you try to connect the supply chain around cost of raw materials and obviously you know, customers. And, and then, then, then you look at the scale that this battery will need um, it, at once we've obviously produced the, the, the right things for our customers uh, and go into, uh, into sales mode. Um, that's, yeah, that's why the S is there. The project's 
is, is definitely uh, an element that you know we're 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 working on that, that we won't just be needing one, but we'll needing many eventually. Yeah, that makes sense. I know this topic has come up in some of the recent webinars we have done too. One other uh, comment or questions I've been receiving deals with the extreme weather conditions that Australia or New South Wales in particular is experiencing with flooding. How is that impacting your graphene manufacturing, I guess, process or any of your supply lines to develop this graphene? Yeah, so I really feel for anyone who's impacted by the floods in Queensland and New South Wales. There, there are many people, many houses have, have gone under. It's a one in a thousand year flood event. Uh, so really significant weather uh, impact. And, we, you know, GMG took precautions uh, and, and we're not significantly impacted. So I could say that, you know, we're, we're back operating within a couple of days after we took precautions to make sure that we weren't going to be impacted. Uh, but my heart does go out for all, everyone who, who is. Uh, let's talk about some battery updates then, because, look, I get a lot of questions on batteries. A lot of people are wondering what the feedback has been from some of these larger companies that have tested out these initial prototype coin cell batteries. Give us a broad update then on what's going on in the battery division here at GMG. So, we, you know, we have received uh, some good feedback from some of our customers. Some are still working through uh, the battery testing, by and large, it, it's a positive feedback um, that the fast charging is is extremely well received. So what we're working on is that using that feedback to be able to build out our product development roadmap and finesse that with respect to the customer's requirements. And so I, I aim to come back to you, you know, in the short period of time, and we'll, we can go through that product development roadmap with you. Uh, Corey, and we can go into a bit of a deep dive. And I think that's probably the right thing to do there. Now, are any of the spikes in commodity prices impacting anything to do with these uh, graphene aluminum ion batteries? Uh, no, I can say at this point that's 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 not the case. We are obviously working with different aluminium, um, large aluminium companies, and we're, we're progressing through a range of conversations the percentage cost of aluminium in our battery is is quite small, uh, so it is not a big driver on cost. Um, maybe when we're at absolute scale, that it might see, provide some in, influence, but even then, I think it will be it, it won't be the biggest driver. There'll be a few others before that, so we're not too concerned about where aluminium prices are right now. Now, how about the current battery manufacturing facility? Any work that's been done there? How is that running? What updates can you give us on this facility? Yeah, so we, we obviously switched on our pilot plant for making the batteries uh, at the end of last year, and that's been making batteries all through the last two months with various different types of uh, internals, so cathodes, electrodes, and, and separators. What is interesting, though, is that because of the floods and the really atypical uh, what's called El Nino weather pattern we've had, the humidity is very high. So uh, it has actually impacted on, on our ability to make consistently the same battery every time. So we have a climate controlled facility being built as we speak. It should be finished in March. Uh, so we, we've actually got a, a time uh, lapse video of that and um, being taken as we build that in t inside our factory. So we'll be able to share that online shortly. And then we'll bring all of our uh, scientists and all of our um, laboratory um, work inside that climate control facility just to remove um, some of the variables that we're experiencing right now because the humidity here is is very high and, and, and that's typically not the best for, for battery making. So what sort of developments can investors watch out for here? Because even this announcement, the one that we kicked off the interview with, with the graphene manufacturing expansion projects, that helps from the very start building and creating the graphene and then moving it into either the battery plant or building out the Thermal XR graphene lubricants division. Where is recent news going to come for Catalyst for the company? Yeah, so we've we're working on our other projects apart from batteries and TXR, so Thermal XR, which is an air conditioning air, air, heat exchanger air, uh, energy saving coating system. We can cons cons consistently get successful projects over the last couple of weeks in addition to what we've already got. And a lot of these on our website, you can go online and see 
the project outcomes. Some of them are really high percentages, but the the bigger equipment have smaller percentages, but they've still got a very large economic saving and emission saving. And now with that database of, of projects, and, and, and there are many around the world, we can then use that for traditional route to market channels. And that is really opening up a lot of opportunities. Um, and those conversations are starting now because we've got enough evidence to show that this product works in the field and there's really nothing else like it. So it's quite a special product uh, in that it, it, is, it does what it does. It can save energy uh, by being coated on an existing heat exchanger, which is pretty much not available otherwise. And so we, we expect to be able to come, at, come back and say, well, this is where, you know, the, these products are, are now um, working through in different route to markets, different uh, channels. The graphene lubricants also uh, is stepping through the marketing hoops of, uh, of uh, lubricant companies and, 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 and starting to become also a product that you could, you could potentially see in, in mainstream in smaller uh, blenders. The bigger blenders will always take time, um, but we are working with those as well. And then, of course, you know, what we'd like to see eventually, as I said to you before, is talk about our battery vision. So we want to be able to share with um, investors our broad support that we're receiving, an understanding of where we think the battery can go. And it is really quite a special battery. It's quite a unique battery. The performance elements of it, we believe, are, are quite outstanding. And we want to go through that with 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 them in a in a product road roadmap conversation, and and that's what we're already sharing with some customers, and we're getting feedback on that. So we're kind of using that to understand what does um, battery customers, very large battery customers, want from this type of battery, and and that'll then be able to will then be able to come forward and and share with with people once we finish those customer conversations. Okay, Craig, thank you for this update. I'll get you out of here on that one. And everybody, please keep on sending in your questions. I still have a list of those, and Craig and I will put together another Q&A structured interview in the near term. But in the meantime, just wanted to give some coverage to that recent news and help Craig explain what that graphene manufacturing expansion project agreement really means for the company. Craig, thank you, as always, for your time, and we'll be in touch again soon. Thanks, Corey. Talk soon.